Sophie's journey, a year of learning and fun. Sophie had always dreamed of visiting another country. She loved reading about far-off places and imagined herself walking through bustling cities, exploring quiet villages and making friends with people from different cultures. One day, her dream came true. Sophie's parents told her they were moving to England for a year because of her father's job. At first, Sophie was excited. She packed her favourite books, her sketch pad and her camera. She couldn't wait to document her adventures. But as the day of the move approached, she began to feel nervous. Would she be able to understand everyone? Would she make friends? What if she couldn't keep up with her schoolwork in a new language? The first day in England was overwhelming. The airport was crowded and noisy. Sophie tried to listen to the announcements, but the accents were different from what she was used to. When they finally arrived at their new house, Sophie was exhausted. She looked out the window of her new room and felt a pang of homesickness. Everything was unfamiliar. The next morning, Sophie's mother woke her up early. Today is your first day at your new school, she said with a smile. Sophie got dressed slowly, feeling a knot of anxiety in her stomach. She missed her friends and her old school. What if she didn't fit in here? As they walked to school, Sophie noticed how different everything looked. The houses were made of brick, and the streets were lined with old trees. The school building was much older than her school back home, with tall windows and ivy climbing the walls. When they entered the school, the halls were filled with students chatting and laughing. Sophie's mother took her to the principal's office. Welcome, Sophie, said Mr. Harris, the principal. We're glad to have you here. He introduced her to Mrs. Thompson, her teacher. Mrs. Thompson had a kind smile. Hello, Sophie. We're excited to have you join our class, she said. In the classroom, Sophie felt everyone's eyes on her. Mrs. Thompson introduced her to the class, and Sophie gave a small wave. You can sit next to Emily, Mrs. Thompson said, pointing to a girl with curly hair and a friendly face. Sophie sat down and smiled at Emily, who smiled back. During the morning lessons, Sophie tried her best to follow along. Some things were easy to understand, but others were confusing. She took notes and whispered questions to Emily, who was patient and helpful. By lunchtime, Sophie felt a little more at ease. In the cafeteria, Emily introduced Sophie to her friends. They asked her questions about her old school and what she liked to do. Sophie was shy at first, but as she talked about her hobbies and interests, she began to relax. She realised that they weren't so different from her friends back home. After lunch, the class had a group project. They were supposed to create a poster about their favourite book. Sophie and Emily worked together, and Sophie was glad to have a partner. She chose Alice in Wonderland, because it had always been her favourite. As they worked, Sophie found herself laughing and having fun. When the school day ended, Sophie felt a sense of accomplishment. She had made it through her first day, and it wasn't as scary as she had imagined. Her mother was waiting for her outside the school. How was it? she asked. Sophie smiled. It was good. I made some new friends, she said. That evening, as Sophie wrote in her journal about her day, she felt a sense of hope. Moving to a new country was a big change, but it was also an adventure. She decided to take it one day at a time, to learn as much as she could, and to enjoy the journey. Sophie knew there would be challenges ahead, but she felt ready to face them. With each new day, she would grow more confident and comfortable in her new home, and who knew what exciting adventures awaited her in this new beginning. The weekend arrived quickly, and Sophie was eager to explore her new town. Her parents decided to take her to the local market, a popular spot known for its variety of stalls, selling everything from fresh produce to handmade crafts. Sophie was excited to see more of her new home and maybe find some treasures to decorate her room. As they walked through the market, Sophie was captivated by the vibrant colours and enticing smells. There were fruits and vegetables she had never seen before, and the aroma of freshly baked bread and pastries filled the air. 
She wandered from stall to stall, her parents following close behind. At one stall, Sophie saw a beautiful necklace made of colourful beads. She picked it up and admired the craftsmanship. Would you like it? Her mother asked. Sophie nodded, and her mother bought it for her. She put the necklace on immediately, feeling happy and a bit more at home with this new piece of jewellery. As they continued to explore, Sophie noticed a small stand selling books. She rushed over, eager to see if there were any interesting stories she could add to her collection. She picked up a book with a bright cover and started to read the first page. It was about a girl who goes on an adventure in a magical land, just like she imagined herself doing. Caught up in the story, Sophie didn't notice that she had wandered away from her parents. When she finally looked up, she realised she was alone. Panic started to set in. She looked around, but there were so many people and so many stalls that everything looked the same. Her heart raced as she tried to remember which direction she had. She clutched the book tightly, feeling tears begin to well up in her eyes. Taking a deep breath, Sophie tried to calm herself. Her parents had always told her that if she ever got lost, she should stay where she was and wait for them to find her. But it was hard to stay still when she was so scared. Just then, a kind-looking lady from the bookstore noticed her distress. Are you lost, dear? She asked gently. Sophie nodded, unable to speak. Don't worry, we'll find your parents. What's your name? Sophie, she managed to say, her voice trembling. Nice to meet you, Sophie. My name is Mrs. Harper. Let's sit here and wait for a bit. I'm sure your parents will come looking for you soon. Mrs. Harper offered Sophie a seat behind the stall and gave her a cup of water. Here, this will help you feel better. Sophie sat down, her heart still pounding but feeling a bit more hopeful. Mrs. Harper was kind and reassuring, and it made Sophie feel less alone. She kept glancing around, hoping to see her parents' familiar faces. Minutes felt like hours, but finally, she saw her mother and father hurrying towards the bookstore, their faces filled with worrying. Sophie, her mother called out, relief flooding her voice. Mom, Dad, Sophie jumped up and ran to them, tears streaming down her face. Her mother enveloped her in a tight hug, and her father patted her back reassuringly. We were so worried, her father said. Thank you so much, he added, turning to Mrs. Harper. It was no trouble at all, Mrs. Harper replied with a warm smile. I'm just glad she's safe. As they walked back through the market, Sophie held tightly to her parents' hands. The scare had shaken her, but it had also taught her an important lesson about being careful and staying close in unfamiliar places. That evening, Sophie sat on her bed, the new book in her lap and the necklace around her neck. She thought about the day's events and how kind Mrs. Harper had been. Despite the fear she had felt, she was grateful for the people who had helped her. Sophie wrote in her journal about the day, including the moment when she had felt so lost and scared. But she also wrote about how relieved she had been to see her parents and how the kindness of a stranger had made a big difference. She realized that even though she was in a new place, there were good people everywhere willing to help. As she turned off the light and snuggled under her blankets, Sophie felt a sense of accomplishment. She had faced a frightening situation and come out of it with new strength and confidence. Moving to a new country was still a big adventure, and she knew there would be more challenges ahead, but she also knew she could handle them. The following Saturday, Sophie was eager to return to the market. Despite the scare of getting lost, she had enjoyed the vibrant atmosphere and the interesting stalls. This time, she promised herself to stay close to her parents. The market was just as bustling as before, with the same array of colourful stalls and enticing smells. Sophie and her parents made their way through the crowds, stopping occasionally to look at something that caught their interest. Sophie spotted a stall selling beautiful, handmade pottery. She loved the intricate designs and the vibrant colours. As she admired a particularly lovely blue vase, the stall owner, an elderly man with a friendly smile, began to talk to her. Do you like it? he asked. Sophie nodded, 
her eyes wide with appreciation. It's made using a traditional method that's been passed down through generations. Each piece tells a story. Sophie was fascinated. What kind of story? She asked. Well, the man said, leaning closer as if to share a secret. This vase, for instance, represents the ocean. The waves you see painted on it tell of a great adventure at sea, where brave sailors encountered magical creatures and discovered hidden treasures. Sophie imagined the sailors battling storms and finding gleaming treasures in underwater caves. She could almost hear the roar of the ocean and the songs of the mermaids. The story made the vase even more beautiful in her eyes. Her parents bought the vase for her, and Sophie carried it carefully as they continued through the market. She couldn't wait to put it in her room, where it would remind her of the story and the magical sea adventure. As they wandered, Sophie noticed a group of children gathered around a street performer. Curious, she tugged on her mother's hand, and they went to see what was happening. The performer was a young woman dressed in colourful clothes, juggling balls and telling jokes that made everyone laugh. Sophie watched in awe as the performer added more and more balls to her act, never missing a beat. Then, with a flourish, she tossed the balls high into the air and caught them all perfectly, to the applause of the crowd. Would anyone like to learn how to juggle? The performer asked, looking around. Sophie hesitated, but then raised her hand. The performer smiled and beckoned her forward. What's your name? she asked. Sophie, she replied, a little nervously. Nice to meet you, Sophie. I'm Clara. Now, juggling takes practice and concentration. Let's start with just one ball. Clara handed Sophie a brightly coloured ball and showed her how to toss it from one hand to the other. At first, Sophie fumbled dropping the ball several times, but Clara was patient and encouraging. Keep trying, you're doing great, she said. Slowly, Sophie got the hang of it, and soon she was able to toss the ball back and forth without dropping it. Well done, Clara said. Clapping, the crowd cheered, and Sophie felt a swell of pride. She had tried something new and succeeded. When they left the market, Sophie was in high spirits. She had a new skill to practice and a beautiful vase that told a story. She felt more at home in her new town, knowing there were so many interesting things to discover and kind people to meet. That night, as she wrote in her journal, Sophie reflected on the day's adventure. She realized that every day in this new place was an opportunity to learn and grow. Whether it was through meeting new people, hearing their stories or trying new things, there was always something to look forward to. Sophie closed her journal and lay down to sleep, a smile on her face. She dreamed of magical seas and juggling balls, ready for whatever new adventure awaited her next. As the weeks went by, Sophie began to settle into her new life in England. She made new friends at school, and her teachers were kind and supportive. She enjoyed exploring the town with her parents on the weekends discovering new places and trying new things. Despite her initial fears, she was starting to feel more at home. One afternoon, Sophie was sitting in the school library, reading a book for her English class. She was so engrossed in the story that she didn't notice someone sitting down next to her until she heard a soft voice. Hi, Sophie, the voice said. She looked up to see a girl with dark hair and bright, curious eyes. I'm Aisha. I just moved here from Pakistan. Hi, Aisha, Sophie replied, smiling. Welcome to our school. How are you finding it so far? It's a bit overwhelming, Aisha admitted. Everything is so different from back home, but everyone has been really nice. Sophie nodded in understanding. I felt the same way when I first came here. But it gets easier, I promise. Would you like to sit with me at lunch today? Aisha's face lit up. I'd love that. Thank you, Sophie. From that day on, Sophie and Aisha became fast friends. They spent their lunch breaks together, talking about their families, their favorite books, and their dreams for the future. Aisha told Sophie all about Pakistan, the beautiful landscapes, the delicious food, and the vibrant festivals. Sophie was fascinated 
and loved hearing about Aisha's experiences. One day, Aisha invited Sophie to her house for dinner. Sophie's parents thought it was a great idea, so they arranged a time for Sophie to visit. Sophie was excited, but also a little nervous. She didn't know much about Pakistani culture and wanted to make a good impression. When Sophie arrived at Aisha's house, she was greeted warmly by Aisha's family. The house was filled with wonderful aromas, and Aisha's mother, Mrs. Khan, welcomed her with a big smile. We're so happy to have you here. Sophie, please make yourself at home. Ari Shah took Sophie on a tour of the house, showing her all the different rooms and explaining some of the cultural traditions her family followed. Sophie was particularly intrigued by the beautiful tapestries and intricate decorations that adorned the walls. Dinner was a feast of flavours Sophie had never experienced before. There were spicy curries, fragrant rice and freshly baked non bread. Sophie tried everything and found that she loved the rich, bold tastes. She and Aisha's family talked and laughed throughout the meal, sharing stories and learning more about each other. After dinner, Aisha's family performed a traditional dance for Sophie. The music was lively and the colourful costumes were mesmerising. Orisha even taught Sophie a few dance steps and they had a lot of fun dancing together. As the evening came to an end, Sophie felt a deep sense of gratitude. She had learned so much about a new culture and had been welcomed with open arms. She realised that making friends from different backgrounds was a wonderful way to broaden her horizons and appreciate the diversity of the world. When Sophie returned home, she couldn't wait to tell her parents about her evening. They listened with interest and encouraged her to continue learning about different cultures and traditions. That night, as Sophie wrote in her journal, she reflected on how much she had grown since moving to England. She had made new friends, tried new things, and learned so much about the world around her. She felt more confident and open-minded, ready to embrace whatever adventures came her way. Sophie closed her journal with a smile, knowing that this new chapter in her life was just beginning. She was excited for the future and all the wonderful experiences it would bring. One chilly autumn morning, Sophie arrived at school to find her classmates buzzing with excitement. Something unusual had happened and everyone was talking about it. As she walked into her classroom, she saw a group of students gathered around the teacher's desk, whispering and pointing at something. What's going on? Sophie asked Emily, who was standing nearby. Someone stole a book from the library, Emily explained. It's a rare, old book that Mr. Harris, the principal, is really proud of. He showed it to us during our history lesson last week. Now it's gone, and no one knows who took it. Sophie's curiosity was piqued. She remembered the book Mr. Harris had shown them, a beautifully bound volume with intricate illustrations and golden lettering. It had been in the school's library for decades, a treasured part of their collection. As the day went on, Sophie couldn't stop thinking about the missing book. She wondered who could have taken it and why. During lunch, she and her friends discussed the mystery, sharing theories and trying to piece together the clues. We should try to find it, Orisha suggested. It would be like a real-life detective story. Sophie and Emily agreed. They decided to form a detective club and solve the mystery of the missing book. After school, they met in the library to start their investigation. They gathered in a quiet corner, away from the other students, and laid out their plan. First, we need to make a list of everyone who had access to the library recently, Sophie said, pulling out a notebook. We should talk to the librarian and see if she noticed anything unusual. The librarian, Mrs. Green, was happy to help. I've been so worried about the missing book, she said. It's one of our most valuable items. I've already talked to Mr. Harris and the teachers, but I didn't see anything suspicious. Did anyone new visit the library recently? Oh, Isha asked. Mrs. Green thought for a moment. Actually, yes. There was a new student who came in a few days ago. His name is Max. He seemed very interested in the old books. With this new lead, 
The girls decided to talk to Max. They found him sitting alone in the cafeteria, reading a book. He was a tall boy with dark hair and glasses, looking slightly nervous as they approached. Hi, Max, Sophie said, smiling. Can we ask you a few questions? Max looked up, surprised. Sure, what is it about? We're trying to find a missing book from the library, Emily explained. Mrs. Green said, you were interested in the old books. Did you see anything unusual when you were there? Max shook his head. No, I didn't see anything strange. I was just looking at the history section. I love old books, but I would never take one without permission. Sophie believed Max was telling the truth. He seemed genuinely interested in helping them find the book. They thanked him and continued their investigation, talking to other students and teachers who might have seen something. As they gathered more information, a pattern began to emerge. Several students mentioned seeing a shadowy figure near the library after school hours. It was always around the same time, just before the janitor locked up for the night. Maybe we should stake out the library, Arisha suggested. If the thief comes back, we can catch them in the act. The girls agreed. That evening, they returned to the school and hid in the library, waiting for the mysterious figure to appear. They huddled together behind a bookshelf, whispering and trying to keep warm in the dimly lit room. Hours passed, and just when they were about to give up, they heard a faint rustling sound. A shadow moved across the room, and they saw a figure creeping towards the history section. Holding their breath, they watched as the figure reached for a book. Now, Sophie whispered, and the girls jumped out from their hiding place, startling the figure. Stop right there, Emily shouted. The figure froze, and as they got closer, they realized it was the janitor, Mr. Thompson. He looked startled and guilty, holding the missing book in his hands. Mr. Thompson, Sophie asked, shocked. Why did you take the book? Mr. Thompson sighed, his shoulder sagging. I didn't mean to steal it, he explained. I found it while cleaning and noticed it had some damage. I took it home to repair it, but I didn't tell anyone because I was afraid of getting in trouble. Sophie and her friends were relieved to have solved the mystery, but they knew they had to tell Mr. Harris. They escorted Mr. Thompson to the principal's office, where he explained everything. Mr. Harris was upset, but grateful that the book was found. You should have told us, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Harris said. We could have helped you, but I'm glad the book is safe. The next day, Sophie and her friends were hailed as heroes by their classmates. They had solved the mystery and saved the school's treasured book. As they celebrated their success, Sophie realized that this new adventure had brought them closer together and taught them the importance of communication and trust. That evening, Sophie wrote about the mystery in her journal, feeling proud of what they had accomplished. She knew there would be more challenges and adventures ahead, but with her friends by her side, she was ready for anything. The weather was getting warmer, and Sophie was excited when her parents announced they were going to spend a day at the beach. It had been a while since she had felt the sand between her toes and heard the soothing sound of the waves. On the day of the trip, Sophie packed her beach bag with everything she would need, a towel, sunscreen, her favorite book, and her new camera. She couldn't wait to capture the beauty of the seaside and make some new memories. The drive to the beach was scenic, with rolling hills and quaint villages along the way. When they finally arrived, Sophie was thrilled to see the vast expanse of golden sand and the sparkling blue ocean stretching out before her. Let's find a good spot, her father said, carrying the beach umbrella and cooler. They walked along the shore until they found a perfect spot near some rocks, where the waves gently lapped at the sand. Sophie wasted no time kicking off her sandals and running to the water's edge. The cool water felt refreshing against her feet, and she giggled as the waves splashed around her ankles. She loved the feeling of freedom that the beach gave her. After setting up their spot, Sophie's parents joined her in the water. They spent hours swimming, building sandcastles, and collecting seashells. Sophie found a particularly beautiful shell that she decided to keep as a souvenir. It was pink and spiraled, 
glistening in the sunlight. As the day went on, Sophie took out her camera and started snapping pictures of the scenery. She captured the waves crashing against the rocks, the seagulls flying overhead, and the children playing in the sand. She even took a few selfies with her parents, laughing and making funny faces. For lunch, they enjoyed a picnic under the shade of the beach umbrella. They had sandwiches, fresh fruit, and cold drinks. Sophie loved the taste of the salty sea air mingling with the flavors of their meal. It was the perfect way to spend a sunny afternoon. After lunch, Sophie decided to explore the rock pools nearby. She carefully climbed over the rocks, looking for interesting sea creatures. She spotted tiny crabs scuttling about and colorful fish darting in and out of the crevices. It was like discovering a whole new world. While she was exploring, Sophie noticed a group of children playing a game of beach volleyball. They looked like they were having a lot of fun, and she wondered if she could join them. Gathering her courage, she approached the group. Hi, can I play with you? She asked, feeling a bit shy. One of the boys, a friendly-looking kid with sandy hair, smiled and said, Sure, we could use another player. I'm Jack, by the way. I'm Sophie, she replied, grateful for the warm welcome. She joined the game and quickly found that she was pretty good at it. They played four hours, laughing and cheering each other on. Sophie made new friends and felt a sense of belonging. As the sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the beach, Sophie's parents called her back. It was time to pack up and head home. Sophie said goodbye to her new friends, promising to meet them again the next time she came to the beach. On the drive home, Sophie looked out the window, feeling a deep sense of contentment. The day had been filled with fun, laughter, and new experiences. She was grateful for the beautiful memories she had made with her family and friends. That night, as she lay in bed, Sophie thought about the day's adventures. She realized that life was full of wonderful surprises, and that there was always something new to discover. She couldn't wait for the next adventure to come her way. As the school year progressed, the excitement of the upcoming school play began to fill the air. Every year, the school put on a big production, and this year's play was Peter Pan. Sophie loved the story of Peter Pan and was thrilled when her teacher announced the auditions. I think you should try out for Wendy, Aisha said to Sophie during lunch. You'd be perfect for the role. Sophie blushed. Do you really think so? I've never acted before. Of course, you're great at reading and telling stories. Acting is just like that, but on a stage, Aisha encouraged her. I'll audition too. It will be fun. With her friend's encouragement, Sophie decided to give it a try. The day of the auditions, she felt a mix of excitement and nerves. She practiced her lines over and over, hoping she would do well. When it was her turn, Sophie took a deep breath and walked onto the stage. The bright lights made it hard to see the audience, but she focused on her lines and tried to put as much emotion into her performance as she could. She imagined herself as Wendy, flying to Neverland and having adventures with Peter Pan. After the auditions, Sophie and Oisha waited anxiously for the cast list to be posted. When it finally went up, they rushed to see the results. To her amazement, Sophie saw her name next to the role of Wendy. Aisha had also been cast as Tinker Bell. We did it, Arisha exclaimed, hugging Sophie. This is going to be amazing. Rehearsals began, and Sophie found herself enjoying every moment. The director, Mrs. Thomas, was patient and encouraging, helping the students bring their characters to life. Sophie loved working with her classmates and learning the intricacies of stage performance. One of the best parts of the experience was making new friends. The boy playing Peter Pan, Liam, was energetic and full of ideas. He and Sophie quickly became friends, working together to perfect their scenes. The rest of the cast was equally enthusiastic, and they all supported each other. As opening night approached, the excitement and nervousness grew. They had practiced tirelessly, and Sophie felt ready, but the thought of performing in front of a large audience was daunting. 
Her parents and friends promised to be there, which gave her some comfort. The night of the performance, Sophie stood backstage, her heart pounding. She peeked through the curtains and saw the auditorium filling up with people. Taking a deep breath, she reminded herself of all the hard work they had put in and the fun they had during rehearsals. When the lights dimmed and the curtain rose, Sophie felt a rush of adrenaline. She stepped onto the stage, and all her nerves seemed to melt away. She was Wendy, and this was her adventure. The audience was captivated by the story, and Sophie felt a thrill as they reacted to each scene. The play was a resounding success, the audience clapped and cheered, and Sophie felt a sense of accomplishment and pride. She had faced her fears and discovered a new passion for acting. Her parents and friends congratulated her, and she knew she had made them proud. As they celebrated backstage, Mrs. Thomas gathered the cast for a final word. You all did an incredible job. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Remember, this experience is about more than just the performance. It's about the friendships you've made and the confidence you've gained. Keep believing in yourselves. That night, Sophie wrote about the play in her journal. She felt grateful for the opportunity and for the support of her friends and family. She had learned so much about herself and had discovered a new love for the stage. Sophie drifted off to sleep, dreaming of future performances and new adventures. She knew that with determination and the support of her loved ones, she could achieve anything she set her mind to. Winter had arrived, and with it came the first snowfall of the season. Sophie woke up one morning to find her world transformed into a winter wonderland. The trees were covered in a blanket of white, and the ground sparkled with freshly fallen snow. Snow day, Sophie exclaimed, rushing to the window. She could hardly contain her excitement. Her parents had already told her that school was cancelled for the day, and she couldn't wait to go outside and play. After bundling up in her warmest clothes, a thick coat, hat, scarf, and gloves, Sophie stepped outside. The air was crisp and cold, but the sight of the snow made her forget about the chill. She ran into the yard, feeling the crunch of the snow under her boots. Sophie and her parents decided to make the most of the snow day. They started by building a snowman. They rolled three large snowballs and stacked them on top of each other. Her father found some stones for the eyes and mouth and her mother added a carrot for the nose. They used an old scarf and had to complete their snowy creation. He's perfect, Sophie declared, stepping back to admire their work. The snowmen stood proudly in their yard, a symbol of their family fun. Next, they decided to have a snowball fight. Sophie and her parents divided into teams and started throwing snowballs at each other, laughing and dodging behind trees and bushes. The cold snow stung their faces, but the joy of the game kept them warm. After a while, they decided to go sledding. They found a nearby hill and brought their sleds. Sophie loved the thrill of racing down the hill, the wind rushing past her as she sped towards the bottom. She and her parents took turns, cheering each other on and enjoying the exhilarating ride. As the afternoon turned to evening, they returned home, tired but happy. They warmed up with hot chocolate, sitting by the fireplace and talking about their favourite moments of the day. Sophie felt a deep sense of contentment, grateful for the special time with her family. Later that evening, Sophie decided to call Orisha and see how she was enjoying the snow day. Orisha answered the phone with a cheerful voice. Hi, Sophie. Did you have fun in the snow? Yes, it was amazing. We built a snowman and went sledding. How about you? We did the same, Oisha replied. My little brother and I had a snowball fight and my mom made us some delicious hot chocolate afterwards. They chatted for a while, sharing their snowy adventures and making plans to meet up the next day if the snow was still there. Sophie loved having a friend like Oisha to share these special moments with that night. Sophie wrote about the snow day in her journal. She described the snowman, the snowball fight, and the sledding, 
capturing every detail of the magical day. She felt lucky to have such wonderful memories to look back on. As she closed her journal, Sophie thought about how much she loved winter and all the fun it brought. She snuggled under her blankets, dreaming of more snowy adventures and the joy of spending time with her family and friends. Sophie knew that every season brought its own special magic, and she couldn't wait to see what other surprises winter had in store for her. Sophie was always looking for new activities to try. So when her school announced the formation of a new club, she was immediately interested. The club was called the Young Explorers, and it promised to take students on exciting adventures around their town and beyond. The first meeting of the Young Explorers was held after school in the library. Sophie arrived early, eager to see what it was all about. She saw several familiar faces, including Orisha, Emily and Max, who all shared her enthusiasm for the new club. Mrs Baker, the club advisor, welcomed everyone with a warm smile. Welcome, young explorers. I'm so glad you're all here. This club is all about discovering new things, exploring our world and learning together. We'll be going on field trips, doing nature walks and even organising some community projects. Sophie felt a thrill of excitement. She loved the idea of exploring new places and learning about the world around her. The first activity Mrs Baker announced was a nature hike in the nearby forest. They would be identifying different plants and animals, learning about the local ecosystem and even doing some bird watching. The day of the hike, Sophie and the other club members gathered at the school ready for their adventure. They had their backpacks filled with snacks, water and notebooks for jotting down observations. Mrs Baker handed out binoculars and field guides to help them identify the various species they might encounter. As they entered the forest, Sophie was struck by the beauty of their surroundings. Tall trees towered overhead, their leaves rustling in the gentle breeze. The ground was carpeted with fallen leaves, and the air was filled with the sounds of birds singing and leaves crunching underfoot. Mrs Baker led the group, pointing out interesting plants and animals along the way. They saw squirrels scampering up trees, butterflies flitting from flower to flower, and even a deer grazing in a clearing. Sophie felt a deep sense of wonder and appreciation for nature. They stopped by a small stream, where Mrs Baker showed them how to look for signs of aquatic life. Sophie and her friends peered into the clear water, spotting tiny fish and water insects. They carefully lifted rocks to see what creatures might be hiding underneath. As they continued their hike, they came across a variety of birds. With the help of their binoculars and field guides, they identified a woodpecker, a robin, and even a colourful blue jay. Sophie was fascinated by the diversity of life in the forest and loved learning about each species. The hike ended with a picnic in a sunny meadow. The young explorers sat in a circle sharing their observations and experiences, Mrs Baker encouraged them to keep exploring and to always be curious about the world around them. Sophie felt a sense of accomplishment and excitement. She loved being part of the young explorers and couldn't wait for their next adventure. She realised that there was so much to discover and she was eager to learn more. That evening, Sophie wrote about the hike in her journal. She detailed the plants and animals they had seen, the thrill of spotting the blue jay, and the fun of exploring with her friends. She felt grateful for the opportunity to be part of the club and looked forward to many more adventures. Sophie knew that the young explorers would take her on many exciting journeys, each one filled with new discoveries and experiences. She couldn't wait to see where their next adventure would take them. The excitement at school reached new heights, as the annual science fair approached. It was one of the most anticipated events of the year, and students were buzzing with ideas and plans for their projects. Sophie and her friends were no exception. They were eager to participate and showcase their scientific curiosity. Sophie had always been fascinated by space, so she decided to create a project about the solar system. She planned to build a model that included all the planets complete with facts and interesting details about each one. Her parents supported her enthusiasm, 
helping her gather materials and offering suggestions. Arishard chose to do a project on renewable energy, focusing on solar power. She wanted to build a small solar-powered car to demonstrate how solar energy could be used in practical ways. Emily decided to explore the world of robotics, designing a simple robot that could follow a line on the ground. Max, with his love of history, chose to create a project on ancient engineering marvels, such as the pyramids and aqueducts. In the weeks leading up to the science fair, Sophie and her friends spent countless hours working on their projects. They stayed after school to use the science lab, often collaborating and sharing ideas. The atmosphere was one of excitement and camaraderie, with everyone eager to see each other's creations. Sophie carefully painted and assembled her solar system model, using different sized balls for the planets and adding rings around Saturn. She researched facts about each planet, writing them on small cards to place next to her model. She loved learning about the vastness of space and the unique characteristics of each planet. Aisha's solar-powered car was a marvel of engineering. She used a small solar panel to power the motor and meticulously designed the car to be both efficient and functional. She tested it multiple times, making adjustments to ensure it worked perfectly. Emily's robot, named Robo, was a hit with everyone who saw it. She programmed it to follow a black line on a white surface, and it performed its task flawlessly. Emily explained the basics of robotics and coding to anyone who asked, excited to share her knowledge. Max's project on ancient engineering was equally impressive. He created detailed models of the pyramids and Roman aqueducts, explaining the techniques and ingenuity behind their construction. His project showcased the brilliance of ancient civilizations and their contributions to modern engineering. The day of the science fair arrived, and the school gymnasium was transformed into a wonderland of scientific exploration. Tables were set up in neat rows, each displaying a unique project. Students, teachers, and parents wandered through the exhibits, marveling at the creativity and hard work on display. Sophie stood proudly by her solar system model, ready to explain her project to anyone who was interested. She felt a mix of excitement and nervousness as people approached her table. But as she began to talk about the planets and share her enthusiasm for space, her nerves melted away. She loved seeing the look of wonder on people's faces as they learned new facts about the solar system. Aisha's solar-powered car drew a lot of attention. She demonstrated how it worked, explaining the principles of solar energy and how it could be used to power vehicles. Her project sparked many conversations about renewable energy and the future of sustainable technology. Emily's robot was a crowd favourite. Children and adults alike were fascinated by Robo as it followed the black line with precision. Emily patiently answered questions about robotics and coding, inspiring others to explore the field of technology. Max's project on ancient engineering was a hit with history enthusiasts. He shared fascinating stories about the construction of the pyramids and the ingenuity of Roman aqueducts. His passion for history was evident, and he enjoyed teaching others about the marvels of ancient engineering. As the day went on, the judges made their rounds, evaluating each project based on creativity, scientific understanding and presentation. Sophie and her friends were thrilled when they were all awarded ribbons for their efforts. Sophie received a ribbon for a best space exploration project, Arisha for innovative renewable energy, Emily for outstanding robotics, and Max for historical engineering excellence. The science fair was a resounding success, and Sophie felt a deep sense of pride in her work and in the accomplishments of her friends. She loved seeing the enthusiasm and curiosity that filled the gymnasium and knew that this experience would stay with her for a long time. That evening, Sophie wrote about the science fair in her journal, detailing the highlights of the day and the joy of sharing her passion for space with others. She felt grateful for the opportunity to learn and grow, and for the support of her friends and family. As she drifted off to sleep, Sophie dreamed of future scientific adventures and the endless possibilities that awaited her. 
she knew that with curiosity and determination, she could explore the wonders of the universe and make a difference in the world. Sophie's school was a melting pot of cultures, and the teachers decided to celebrate this diversity with a cultural festival. Each class was assigned a different country to represent, and students were encouraged to explore the traditions, food, and history of their chosen nation. Sophie's class was assigned Japan, a country she knew little about, but was eager to learn more. The project involved creating a display booth that showcased various aspects of Japanese culture, from traditional clothing to cuisine and festivals. Sophie and her classmates divided into groups, each focusing on a different element. Sophie joined the group working on traditional Japanese clothing. They researched kimonos, yukatas, and samurai armor, learning about their history and significance. Sophie was fascinated by the intricate designs and the artistry involved in creating these garments. They even arranged to borrow a kimono from a local cultural center to display at their booth. Aisha's group decided to focus on Japanese cuisine. They planned to make sushi and mochi, traditional Japanese dishes, to share with visitors. Aisha loved cooking and was excited to learn new recipes. She spent hours perfecting her sushi rolls, making sure they looked and tasted just right. Emily and Max were in the group exploring Japanese festivals. They researched famous festivals like Hanami, the Cherry Blossom Festival, and Tonobata, the Star Festival. They created colorful decorations and planned a small reenactment of a traditional festival dance to perform at the cultural festival. As the day of the festival approached, the school was abuzz with activity. Students worked tirelessly to set up their booths, each representing a different country. The gymnasium was transformed into a vibrant marketplace, filled with sights, sounds, and smells from around the world. On the day of the festival, Sophie's class proudly unveiled their booth. The kimono they had borrowed was displayed on a mannequin, and the table was filled with information about traditional clothing. Visitors marveled at the beautiful designs and intricate details. Orisha and her group set up a small kitchen area where they made fresh sushi and mochi. The aroma of the food drew people to their booth, and they eagerly sampled the delicious dishes. Orisha explained the ingredients and the process of making sushi, enjoying the smiles of those who tasted her creations. Emily and Max's group had created a festive atmosphere at their booth. They hung colorful streamers and lanterns, and their reenactment of the Tonobata dance was a hit. Visitors clapped along, and some even joined in, experiencing the joy of Japanese festivals firsthand. The cultural festival was a huge success. Sophie and her friends loved sharing what they had learned and seeing the excitement on people's faces as they explored the different booths. The event highlighted the beauty of cultural diversity and the importance of understanding and appreciating different traditions. That evening, Sophie wrote about the cultural festival in her journal. She described the vibrant colors, the delicious food, and the joyful atmosphere. She felt proud of what she and her classmates had accomplished and grateful for the opportunity to learn about a different culture. Sophie realized that understanding and celebrating diversity the world a richer and more interesting place. She looked forward to learning more about other cultures and sharing those experiences with her friends and family. One day, Sophie's parents announced that they were hosting a family reunion. Relatives from all over the country would be coming to visit, and Sophie was excited to see everyone. She had fond memories of past reunions and couldn't wait to reconnect with her cousins aunts, uncles, and grandparents. Preparations for the reunion began weeks in advance. Sophie and her parents cleaned the house from top to bottom, set up extra beds, and planned a menu filled with family favorites. Sophie's mother spent hours in the kitchen, cooking up delicious dishes that reminded Sophie of her childhood. On the day of the reunion, the house was filled with laughter and chatter as relatives arrived. Sophie's cousins ran through the house, excitedly greeting each other and catching up on their latest adventures. The adults gathered in the living room, sharing stories and reminiscing about old times. 
Sophie was particularly excited to see her cousin Lucy, who was her age and her closest friend in the family. They had grown up together and shared countless memories. As soon as Lucy arrived, they hugged each other tightly, giggling with joy. We have so much to talk about, Lucy exclaimed. I can't wait to hear all about your new school and your friends. Sophie and Lucy spent the afternoon catching up, playing games and exploring the backyard. They climbed the old oak tree, reminiscing about the times they had pretended it was a pirate ship or a secret hideout. Sophie felt a sense of nostalgia, remembering the magic of their childhood adventures. As the sun began to set, everyone gathered in the backyard for a barbecue. Sophie's father manned the grill, cooking up burgers, hot dogs and kebabs. The air was filled with the mouth-watering aroma of grilled food and everyone eagerly lined up to fill their plates. After dinner, they set up a bonfire and roasted marshmallows for s'mores. The warm glow of the fire illuminated the faces of Sophie's family members as they shared stories, laughed and enjoyed each other's company. The night sky was clear and the stars twinkled above, adding to the magical atmosphere. Sophie and Lucy decided to put on a little talent show for their family. They had always loved performing, and this reunion was the perfect opportunity. They planned a short skit, combining their favourite scenes from different stories they had made up over the years. With a mix of humour and drama, they entertained their audience, earning applause and cheers from their family. As the night grew late, the younger children were put to bed, and the adults continued to talk around the fire. Sophie and Lucy, wrapped in blankets, stayed up a little longer, enjoying the comforting presence of their loved ones. Sophie felt a deep sense of belonging and happiness, surrounded by the people who knew and loved her best. The next morning, the family gathered for a big breakfast. The kitchen was a bustling hive of activity, with everyone pitching in to cook and set the table. There were pancakes, eggs, bacon and fresh fruit, a feast fit for the occasion. They ate together, laughing and talking about the fun they had the previous night. After breakfast, it was time for a family photo. Everyone gathered in the backyard, finding their places as the camera was set up. Sophie's grandfather took charge, making sure everyone was in the frame before setting the timer and running to join the group. The photo captured a moment of togetherness and joy, a memory they could cherish forever. As the reunion came to an end, Sophie felt a mix of sadness and gratitude. She hated saying goodbye to her cousins, especially Lucy, but she knew they would keep in touch and plan future visits. The family promised to have reunions more often, recognising the importance of staying connected. That evening, after everyone had left, Sophie and her parents sat in the living room, reflecting on the weekend. They felt tired, but happy, grateful for the time spent with family. Sophie's mother suggested that they start a tradition of writing letters to their relatives, keeping the bonds strong even when they couldn't be together in person. Sophie loved the idea and decided to write the first letter to Lucy. She described all the fun they had, the games they played, and the plans they made for their next adventure. Writing the letter made her feel closer to Lucy and helped her cope with the sadness of parting. As she wrote in her journal that night, Sophie reflected on the importance of family. She felt lucky to have such a supportive and loving family, and she was determined to keep those connections strong. The reunion had reminded her of the joy that family brings and the comfort of knowing there are people who love you unconditionally. Sophie went to bed that night with a heart full of love and gratitude. She knew that no matter where life took her, she would always have her family to support and guide her. The reunion had been a beautiful reminder of the bonds that hold them together and the memories they shared. Spring was in full bloom and Sophie's neighbourhood was buzzing with excitement about a new project, the community garden. The idea had been suggested at a town meeting and many families, including Sophie's, had eagerly volunteered to help. The garden would be a place where everyone could come together to grow fruits, vegetables and flowers 
fostering a sense of community and sustainability. Sophie's family had always loved gardening, so they were thrilled to be part of this project. They spent weekends preparing their own little plot in the garden, turning the soil, planting seeds, and setting up a small fence to keep out rabbits. Sophie enjoyed getting her hands dirty, feeling the earth between her fingers, and watching the garden come to life. The community garden quickly became a hub of activity. Neighbours of all ages worked side by side, sharing tips and stories. There was a strong sense of camaraderie, and Sophie made new friends, including a boy named Alex, who was passionate about growing tomatoes. One sunny Saturday, the community decided to host a garden party to celebrate the progress they had made. Tables were set up with homemade treats, lemonade, and fresh produce from the garden. There were games for the children and the plant swap for the adults. It was a joyous occasion, filled with laughter and a shared sense of accomplishment. Sophie and Alex teamed up for the garden scavenger hunt, which involved finding specific plants, insects, and garden tools. They raced around, having a blast as they ticked off items on their list. By the end of the hunt, they had formed a strong friendship, bonded by their love of gardening. The highlight of the day was the unveiling of a new mural on the garden shed. Local artists had collaborated to create a beautiful painting that depicted scenes of nature, community and growth. Sophie and her friends were in awe of the vibrant colours and detailed artwork. The mural became a symbol of their collective efforts and the beauty of working together. As the season progressed, the garden flourished. Sophie loved visiting it after school, tending to the plants and watching them grow. She learned about different types of plants, how to care for them, and the importance of patience and dedication. The garden became her sanctuary, a place where she could relax and connect with nature. One day, Mrs. Thompson, an elderly neighbour who was an experienced gardener, invited Sophie to help her with her plot. Mrs. Thompson had a wealth of knowledge and was eager to share it with Sophie. They spent hours together, planting, weeding, and talking about life. Sophie treasured these moments, learning not only about gardening, but also about kindness and wisdom. As summer arrived, the garden was in full bloom. The community held a harvest festival to celebrate their hard work. Everyone brought dishes made from the garden's produce, creating a feast of fresh, delicious food. There were tomato salads, zucchini bread, strawberry desserts, and much more. The festival was a joyous celebration of nature's bounty and the community's efforts. Sophie felt a deep sense of pride as she looked around at the flourishing garden and the happy faces of her neighbours. She realised that the garden was more than just a place to grow food. It was a symbol of their community's strength and unity. The experience had taught her the value of working together and the joy of nurturing something from seed to harvest. That evening, Sophie wrote about the community garden in her journal. She described the vibrant colours of the flowers, the delicious taste of the fresh produce, and the friendships she had made. She felt grateful for the opportunity to be part of such a wonderful project and proud of what they had achieved together. As she drifted off to sleep, Sophie dreamed of future harvests and the continued growth of the community garden. She knew that the lessons she had learned would stay with her, guiding her in future endeavours and reminding her of the power of community and nature. The end of the school year was fast approaching, and the students were buzzing with excitement about the upcoming school trip. This year, the destination was a historical village, where they would spend a few days learning about life in the past. Sophie and her friends could hardly contain their excitement. It promised to be an adventure filled with fun and discovery. The morning of the trip, Sophie woke up early, her suitcase packed and ready by the door. She had everything she needed, clothes, toiletries, a journal and her camera. Her parents dropped her off at school, where the buses were waiting. The air was filled with chatter and laughter as students boarded the buses, ready for their journey. The bus ride was filled with excitement. Sophie sat with Oisha, 
and they talked about what they hoped to see and do. The historical village was known for its well-preserved buildings and immersive reenactments, offering a glimpse into life during the 18th and 19th centuries. Upon arrival, the students were greeted by tour guides dressed in period clothing. They led the group through cobblestone streets, past charming cottages, blacksmith shops, and the bustling marketplace. Sophie felt like she had stepped back in time. Enchanted by the authenticity of the village, the students were divided into smaller groups for different activities. Sophie's group started with a visit to the blacksmith's shop, where they watched as iron was heated and shaped into tools and horseshoes. The blacksmith explained the importance of his trade and even let the students try their hand at hammering a piece of iron. Next, they visited the apothecary, where they learned about herbal medicine and the remedies used in the past. Sophie was fascinated by the jars of dried herbs and the descriptions of their healing properties. She made a note in her journal to research more about herbal medicine when she got home. The day continued with a tour of a colonial farmhouse. The guide explained how families lived, worked and cooked in the 18th century. Sophie loved exploring the old kitchen with its large fireplace and cast iron pots. She tried her hand at churning butter and even helped bake bread in a traditional oven. One of the highlights of the trip was a reenactment of a colonial town meeting. The students were given roles to play and Sophie was chosen to be the town crier. She stood in the centre of the village square, ringing a bell and calling out the news of the day. It was a fun and educational experience, giving them a sense of how communities communicated and made decisions in the past. In the evenings, the students gathered in the village inn, where they enjoyed hearty meals and shared stories about their day. They played games, sang songs, and even participated in a traditional dance. Sophie loved the sense of camaraderie and the opportunity to experience life as it was in the past. The final day of the trip included a visit to the village schoolhouse. The students sat at wooden desks, writing on slate boards with chalk. The schoolmaster, dressed in period attire, taught a lesson on the three R's, reading, writing and arithmetic. Sophie enjoyed the experience, though she was grateful for her modern school and the comforts it provided. As the trip came to an end, the students gathered for a group photo in front of the village's main building. They posed with their tour guides, dressed in historical costumes, and the photo captured the excitement and joy of their adventure. Sophie knew this trip would be a cherished memory for years to come. On the bus ride home, Sophie and Oisha shared their favourite moments from the trip. They laughed about Sophie's role as the town crier and marvelled at the skills of the blacksmith. They felt a deeper appreciation for history and the people who lived in the past. That evening, Sophie wrote a detailed entry in her journal about the school trip. She described the historical village, the activities they participated in, and the things she learned. She included sketches of the blacksmith shop, the apothecary, and the colonial farmhouse. Writing it all down helped her relive the experience and solidify the knowledge she had gained. As she went to bed, Sophie reflected on how much she had enjoyed the trip and how it had sparked her interest in history. She realised that learning about the past could be just as exciting as exploring new places in the present. She looked forward to future school trips and the adventures they would bring. The school year was drawing to a close, and excitement filled the air as the end-of-year celebration approached. This annual event was a highlight for students and teachers alike marking the end of the school year with festivities and fun. Sophie and her friends were eager to participate and celebrate their achievements. Preparations for the celebration began weeks in advance. Each class was assigned a different task, from decorating the school to planning games and activities. Sophie's class was in charge of creating a colourful mural that would be displayed in the school gymnasium. They decided to depict scenes from their favourite school events and activities throughout the year. Sophie loved art, and she was thrilled to help design and paint the mural. She worked alongside her classmates, sketching out the scenes and adding vibrant colours. 
The mural featured images of the science fair, the cultural festival, the community garden, and the school trip. It was a beautiful representation of their shared experiences and the memories they had created together. The day of the celebration arrived, and the school was transformed into a lively carnival. There were booths with games and prizes, food stalls offering delicious treats, and a stage set up for performances. The gymnasium was filled with laughter and music, creating an atmosphere of joy and excitement. Sophie and her friends spent the day playing games, winning prizes, and enjoying the various activities. They took turns at the ring tours, tried their luck at the duck pond, and competed in a three-legged race. The air was filled with the sounds of children having fun and the scent of popcorn and cotton candy. One of the highlights of the celebration was the talent show. Students had been rehearsing for weeks, eager to showcase their talents. Sophie and Lucy decided to perform a dance routine they had choreographed themselves. They had practiced diligently, and their performance was a hit, earning applause and cheers from the audience. As the sun began to set, the school grounds were illuminated with twinkling lights. Families gathered for a picnic dinner, spreading blankets on the grass and sharing homemade dishes. Sophie's parents brought a delicious pasta salad and a fruit platter, and they enjoyed the meal together, surrounded by friends and neighbours. The evening concluded with a fireworks display. Sophie watched in awe as the night sky lit up with brilliant colours and patterns. The fireworks were a fitting end to a wonderful day, symbolising the excitement and possibilities of the future. As the celebration came to a close, Sophie felt a mix of emotions. She was happy and proud of all she had accomplished during the school year, but she also felt a tinge of sadness that it was ending. She knew she would miss her teachers and classmates over the summer, but she looked forward to the adventures that awaited her in the new school year. That night, Sophie wrote a final entry in her school year journal. She described the end of year celebration in vivid detail, capturing the joy and excitement of the day. She reflected on the friendships she had made, the lessons she had learned, and the experiences that had shaped her. As she closed her journal, Sophie felt a sense of accomplishment and gratitude. The school year had been filled with wonderful memories, and she was excited for the future. She knew that each new day brought new opportunities for learning and growth, and she was ready to embrace them. Shadows lurked in the corners of their vision, and whispers echoed through the corridors of their minds, tempting them with promises of untold power. Sophie went to bed with a heart full of happiness, dreaming of the adventures that lay ahead. She knew that with curiosity, determination, and the support of her family and friends, she could achieve anything she set her mind to. The end of the school year was not an end, but a new beginning, and Sophie was ready to make the most of it. Thanks for watching.